So here we have the brand new GoPro Hero 12 Black, which has just been released. And first I wanna say these freckles, which is this these blue dots on the on the body of the camera, those are actually quite subtle. I thought it was gonna be worse because of the images I've seen from GoPro, but it's actually not that bad. It's really subtle, so yeah. So here's a comparison uh, with the GoPro Hero 11 and uh, if this can focus there, I don't know if you can see if there is a huge difference here, but in real life, there's actually a minor difference between these two when it comes to these speckles. It actually looks a little bit more grayish overall, which I actually quite like. What's really awesome now is that it has this quarter inch screw on the bottom, which is actually pretty nice and convenient for me when I'm using my cameras, because now I can easily use the quick lock system from Insta360, which I can just screw onto the GoPro Hero 12 here. So what I can do now is to just snap this onto the base of the system here. So I have one on my helmet here. And what I could do is just put it in place like that and I am good to go. And I have a few of these uh, these base mounts here so I can just mount it everywhere I want. So it's a really nice and convenient system. I will leave a link to this um, down in the description below if you wanna check it out. Now, looking at the footage from the Hero 12, it actually looks pretty good. And this is the 10-bit 5.3K 30fps resolution, and it's the vibrant colors. It actually looks pretty darn good. Compared to any of the cameras, this is the latest one being released, and it has the worst screen experience when you're touching around on it. So that's also one thing to take into consideration. It lags and when you tap something, it won't always respond. So I've been playing around with this for a few hours now and just tapping on the screen, it is no difference. It's exactly the same as the Hero 11. So that's a bummer. It is what it is and that's just something that you might experience with your GoPro if you decide to pick this up. But overall, the video quality looks Awesome, it looks amazing. One thing though that was actually a little bit of a bummer is that the aspect ratio, you can change from uh, 16 by nine to nine by 16, four by three and eight by seven, but you will actually have to go into the settings menu to do that. There is no shortcut option for that, which is a huge disappointment for me. At least I haven't been able to find it yet. So if there is a way to do that, please let me know in the comments below. But as we saw with the advertisement from GoPro, it was easily changeable by just like Sliding the handle on the right side of the camera. That's obviously false and it doesn't work like that. I, if, well, it might, it might, at least I haven't been able to figure out how to do it. So again, if you know, let me know down in the comments below. But this uh, is a bummer. This is a huge disappointment that you can actually have this as a shortcut. You will always have to go into the settings to change to the different aspects. And I've tried all different settings and uh, tried to see if there is any shortcuts added for the 16 by nine, nine by 16, four by three and eight by seven, but there's no added additional shortcut for that. The only one you have is a lens which controls the field of view and so on. So yeah, a huge disappointment on that part. And this is an audio test with the GoPro Hero 12. The camera is about an arm's length away from me. How does the audio sound coming directly from the camera without any microphone attached? Let me know in the comments below. And this is the new 10-bit log profile which is also new to the GoPro Hero 12. This allows you to get a better dynamic range in your shots increasing the details in the highlights and shadows, making it so much easier for anyone to color correct and color grade their footage. Now, one thing you should know about the 10 bit low profile is that it has a maximum ISO of 400, which means it's not gonna be usable or that good when it comes to low light or scenes which is not properly lit, which is a bit of a bummer. I wish there was a higher ISO limit, at least 800, but as of now, there is only 400.
Now, when it comes to what you get in the box, you get a charging cable and the same thumb screw as you always have. But here, DJI is taking the lead with a more convenient, easy to use thumb screw. You also get a mount with the 3M tape on it, and you also get this additional uh, mount, a GoPro mount, which you can just snap into place and you can fasten your GoPro on that. So that's basically the accessories you get, which is included, which is also to me, well, you probably have a GoPro already. You probably already have all the accessories, but if you're buying a GoPro for the very first time, it would be nice to have some additional accessories to get you going straight away. Just like we saw with the Insta360 Go 3, which basically provided all the accessories needed to shoot videos for years, which is something that I think GoPro should improve on. And I, even though I knew I was hoping for something secret to be, you know, available in the box, but it wasn't. So one thing I do recommend though, is to get the Insta360 quick release system because it's it makes a huge difference. Or you can get a third party replacement feet on Amazon for $10. So you can basically replace uh, these feet here with uh, an accessory, which allows you to use this with the um, action four mounts as well as it has uh, a quarter inch screw so we can use it with something like the Insta360 quick release system. Now as of stabilization this is with the Hypersmooth 6.0 enabled and as I'm running here putting a lot of shake to the camera it actually keeps the image pretty well stabilized and I'm actually pretty impressed with this as a normal stabilization applied to the camera but as soon as we apply the auto boost you can see the improvement in the stabilization. As I turn the camera here and put a lot of shake into these two cameras, you can see how well stabilized the footage actually is, which is actually pretty impressive. Now, as of use, battery, overheating, and all that, I will save that to my more in-depth uh, review of the GoPro Hero 12. But as of my first impression and using it straight out of the box to capture some of my usual activities without doing much customization to the settings, I do like the look of the GoPro Hero 12. Compared to the GoPro Hero 10 and 11, there's not much difference in image quality when using the standard video with the vibrant or natural color profile. So there we have my hand on first impressions of the GoPro Hero 12. Uh, it's um, a little bit early to say whether or not I think it's good. I still have some tests to do, which is gonna be interesting. But as a first impression, I think it's a really good competitor to the Action 4. Do I think this is better than the Action 4 or do I think the Action 4 is still the king of action cameras? Well, stay tuned for that video. So with that said, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the quality, if you have anything you want to add, let me know down in the comments section below. All the links to everything in this video will be down there as well. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already to see more GoPro videos. And also don't forget to drop a like if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.